Hello, welcome to my channel Dharma Makes and welcome to this video. I made a music box with a little surprise inside. Of course, to make this possible, I actually needed the music box mechanism. I actually had this in my stash for a long time and it's just a simple uh, winding mechanism. Um, it was encased in this transparent plastic, which was really good at protecting the mechanism from dust and all sorts of stuff, but in my case it made it too big. So the first thing I'm going to do is disassemble the casing. Uh, so I just removed the screws and I had to get rid of some uh, sticky tape and it's almost the perfect size to fit inside of this little wooden box but to make it actually work and be able to wind I needed a hole on the side of the box so I'm just marking the place where I'm going to be making a slit I'm going to be using this little handsaw and just cutting a slit into the side of the box um, being careful uh, adjusting as I go making sure that it fits it's always better to go smaller um, and then you can cut a bigger hole um, than going too large and mess it up So after quite a little bit of testing and measuring, I got the result that I wanted. Of course, I also had to sand down that hole so that it's smooth and nothing will catch. And with this opportunity, I just... Uh, send it down the entire box and uh, of course i removed the hardware um, there are just these little hinges it actually closes with a little magnet that's embedded straight into the wood i actually used a little bit of a coarser sandpaper on this as the wood was quite rough and i wanted all of the edges to be um, very smooth and off to painting. Um, first, I'm going to paint the box in a couple of coats of a nice chocolate brown acrylic paint, making sure to cover everything. And the wood was quite thirsty, so I think it took about two or three coats overall. This is the reason I like to take the hinges off so that I can more easily get into the inside and every corner of the box. And just in case the hinges migrate, there wouldn't be any raw wood uh, to show through. So uh, when my box is painted, I'm actually hot gluing the mechanism inside. And this is going to keep it permanent. Um, watching the little wheel turn is actually quite fun. But for my purposes, I'm actually going to cover the mechanism. And for that, I'm just cutting out a piece of cardboard and measuring just to see that it fits perfectly. And of course, I'm going to paint it in the same chocolate brown to match and then I glued it in with hot glue and now the mechanism is hidden except for the little handle this time I want to decorate the box with some beautiful pattern papers so I'm going to measure every side and I'm going to cut out 
um, little pieces that will fit um, just with like one or two millimeters from the edge. Um, of course, making sure to cut out a place for the handle so that it can freely turn and I'm just uh, test measuring and adjusting as I go along. I'm not the best at accuracy, um, but on this one I felt that having those neat little panels was going to have a nice aesthetic effect. So I just tried my best to measure and make everything fit nicely. This pattern paper that I'm using is from a pack that I've had for probably 10 years. Um, they're really nice floral uh, papers in sort of like orangish hues and they're also a little bit sparkly and textured. I'm using purple ink um, to do all the edges of all of the papers, um, sort of like using a sponge and uh, creating this mottled effect. Um, yellowish, orange and purple go really well together as they are complementary colors. And I'm making sure to ink up all of the edges so there's none of that white showing through from the core of the paper. At this stage I decided that I actually want to dress up the little handle of um, the mechanism as well. So I just cut out a strip of paper, I'm curling it, and I'm just going to be wrapping it around. Um, the little handle is silver, and later on I'm going to be working with um, sort of copperish accents, and I wanted to hide as much of it as possible. I'm also cutting out a little circle to just cap the end of it as well. And of course, even with these tiny pieces, I make sure to ink all of the edges so that everything fits together perfectly. And when I'm done with that, I'm just gluing in all of the little pieces um, with PVA glue. It's a perfect medium to work on paper and wood. I'm using a fine tip applicator. I'm not over gluing, but I'm like spreading it out in a very thin coat, making sure that it sticks on everywhere. I had these tricky little sides with the diagonal line, but I think they came out right in the end. To um, stick the paper to the metal handle, I'm actually using a little bit of solvent glue. Um, I don't trust the PVA glue on metal. And to hide the remaining silver part of the handle, I'm just using some alcohol ink uh, that's sort of copper colored. And I'm using the opportunity having the alcohol ink already out to um, recolor the hinges and the screws that hold the hinges in as well. I do not like it when there's metals of different colors in a piece. I mean if you're going for a steampunk aesthetic with lots of different metallic bits and bobs that is fine but um, not in a case like this. Now moving on to the surprise inside. I actually want to fill this little box with flowers. And I pulled out a selection of silk flowers 
in uh, purples and oranges and I'm just picking out petals and bits that I'm going to use. I'm just sealing some of the edges with the lighter. This keeps them from fraying. I'm using a variety of smaller and bigger leaves and I do end up cutting up some of the flowers. I'm trying to make just a really cute cluster. And of course I want to fit in as many flowers as possible into this small space. Um, but I still want it to look like it's uh, assembled with intention. And as you can see, I'm using hot glue to attach everything. Some of these pieces have been previously painted, like uh, the silk leaves you see. So they look a little bit more realistic. So I have this big orange rose and I'm also adding uh, smaller ones as well as the purple flowers that fill in all of the gaps. You can still see some of the leaves. And of course I'm putting the hinges back on so I'm making holes in the paper um, to where the screws will go and actually this makes for a very snug fit um, with a little bit of paint trapped in there and with the extra paper it makes the hinge fit on like it's newly drilled and we're almost done that's what it looks like inside. Now all I need to do is finish the top of the box. So to do that I'm going to be using this um, metal rosette. Uh, because I've been using pattern paper I didn't want to go over the top. So just a simple ornamental piece I think is enough. And I painted it with the same copper colored um, alcohol ink and gluing it on with the solvent glue. And there it is, my little music box is finished. Now let's have a closer look and actually listen to what the music box actually sounds like. I think this makes a lovely little birthday present for someone who really likes flowers. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I have lots of other crafty videos already there for you to watch. I make all sorts of things from miniatures to embroidery to sculpture, please consider visiting my channel and subscribing. Thank you for watching, I hope you're having a nice day, bye!